Hello there, folks. Frank Zarilla here, Zora Capital, the 4th of March. Uh, just doing a quick video in regards to the market, uh, just, just to see what's going on and, and just to see if, what we can uh, figure out for this upcoming week. So here on the screen, what we're looking at is a 30-minute look across the board that, you know, certain indices and also certain important sectors. We have the SMH, the SPY, IWM, QQQs, Biotech's XBI, and the VXX. So, you know, very simply, we all know this is what happened last month. We had this waterfall decline a couple of days across the board. We had a very nice bounce. Uh, and then we kind of like sold off a little bit. Every single index that's on this screen, uh, except the VXX is trading below their five-day moving average. So in the short term, that's somewhat... It's somewhat of a concern, but um, I think that the market, the stocks underneath the surface are acting okay. Specifically, the FANG names, Apple, Microsoft, Netflix, Amazon, Google, uh, they're acting fine. Um, so either way, let's look at my watch list. This is my, uh, for me, what the best barometer to see how well the market is doing for swing trading is my rolling five-day watch list. If that's acting fine and they're triggering and they're moving, uh, for me, the market is somewhat healthy in the short term. Short term being, you know, one to 10 days. So before we even get started, you know, looking at my rolling five-day watch list, I'm a firm believer that what matters the most in the short term, 1 to 20 days, is momentum and mean reversion. That's very simply. And if you ever wanted to know what's the most important things within your time frame, just study the stocks that have done the best within your time frame. So if your time frame is 21 days, take a look at the best performing stocks over the last 21 days for the next six months. And then start looking at some of the main characteristics, some of the common characteristics. And that's how you know what works and what doesn't work, what's a myth and what's not a myth. That's, that's just very simply. You don't have to read any books in regards to trading uh, because right now, if you study what's working best within your time frame, you know what's working now and you know what's true and what's not true. So again, I'm a firm believer in that in the short term, mean reversion and momentum is what works best. And what I'm looking for in a trade in the short term is a stock that, number one, is, is pulling back uh, after a nice run higher or a stock that's contracting, uh, you know, after, uh, after uh, its first leg higher. And then I'm looking for that second move. As I go through my watch list, I'm going to give you some examples. Uh, here's BSTI. This was on the list on 223. Uh, here the stock prints an inside day. Um, on 222, here was the trigger going through this high. As you can see here, 10, 20 day moving average. Uh, have has you know they've been acting as resistance. Now they started acting as support. The stock had a very nice move from eight dollars to roughly almost ten dollars. Did a you know a little nice pullback. We got involved at 943. We didn't make money on this trade. Uh, we sold it right over here because they were coming out with their numbers and. Uh, you know, when you're when you're playing the earnings game is, is pretty much a roll of the dice. But either way, this is this is an example here. You will find this a setup like this or this type of stock in, under this context, either under if you have a scan that looks for inside days, which an inside day is when the low is higher than the previous day low, and when the high is lower than the previous day high. Um, so what here's another stock that we put on Twitter, you know, here, the stock is acting extremely well and, you know, even it held up extremely well when the market wasn't doing that well. And here you can see the candles have, you know, started to tighten up here. This was the trigger. Uh, we got long on 223 as it broke this little high here, 2030 or 2045. We sold some on the way up, up 10%, 7.5%, 12.5%, and we missed 15% right over here by six cents. Uh, but the stock is still doing well. I still own the piece, and, and, and as you can see here, the stock retraced back to the 10 day and 20 day, and it bounced. You know, it bounced off these averages like a tennis ball. I'm looking for more follow through. I'm not so sure that I uh, that I would initiate a new position here, but 
Um, this is something that we're looking at, something like this, something that's, you know, contracting. And what we're looking for is expansion. And what we're looking to do is get involved on the first day of the expansion. AQ, this, is, this was a very good looking chart. You know, stock had a big move higher, started to trade sideways. As you can see here, uh, it starts to tighten up a little bit. This was, we got involved here going through this high, which was 1464. We got long at 1480. Uh, the stock made a you know, little move higher, not much, not enough to take any profits. And then it sold off and it went through the breakout day low and also the 20 day moving average. And we took this, this was a loss for us. But here's a, uh, but there's something here. You should never have a concern about taking stops. You should always, always take your stops. But more importantly, once you take your stop, uh, don't be afraid to get back involved if the stock sets up again, okay? Um, and I did not get involved in this one, but I could have gone through this high, but I'll show you a different example uh, of being stopped out and getting back involved. SPPI is a stock that we flagged numerous, numerous times, uh, not only as a daily setup, but also as a weekly setup. This looks pretty decent on the weekly. Uh, you know, very nice, very tight. So we've been involved at 2007 here on the weekly, 2064 on the daily, and the stock still looks good. And it's, look, very simple. We got involved here, going through this high on 122. The stock had a very nice move of roughly, um, roughly 20% in a matter of one, two, three, four, five days. That's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for short-term bursts. Stocks move in short-term momentum bursts of one, anywhere between three to 10 days. And that's what we look at to, you know, to take advantage of. Then the stock sells off, still looks okay, prints an inside day right over here. And we got involved again, going through this high of 2046. We got involved at 2064. Uh, we took some in the uh, uh, we sold some on the way up of 10 percent and we're still holding on to some the stock looks okay as long as it holds this 20 level the stock is looking real good but again what you're looking for is you see a stock that made a, a huge move higher chances are that unless you were know the story you missed this move and what you want to do is you want to wait for this sideways pattern to get involved and you want to get involved when 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 the stock starts to tighten up uh, and starts printing, you know, very sh small candles, inside days, NR7 days, and you want to buy the stock, go into the previous day high, and then you want to sell some on the way up, okay? And this is what you're going to see if you go through a thousand charts in the short term. What you're going to see is stocks will go up for five, six, seven days in a row, and then move sideways to down. And what you want to do is take advantage and get involved in the first expansion day, and then sell on the way up. Not buy something when it's already up five, six days in a row. G-A-L-T, similar situation, stock had a nice move, it retraced back, you start seeing, you can see it here, uh, inside day, inside day, inside day, the stock starts to tighten up at the very end, uh, you can see it starts to base over here at the $4 level, uh, we got involved here going through 415 on 216, it had a nice move higher, I think it went as high as 10% right over here, enough to take some profits, uh, and then it drifted sideways. We sold some at break even, sold some at a loss, but we're still involved. But here's a situation where we sold some, uh, but we still were looking to get back involved uh, as it went through this high. Um, so again, if you get stopped out, do not be afraid to buy back the stock, even if it's at a higher level uh, than from where you sold it. ZFGN, similar situation. Stock had a nice move, trading sideways, held up extremely well when the market was going down. Uh, these yellow arrows is pretty much when we got involved. They were all through previous day highs. We got involved on Friday again, um, added to our position here, going through 797 along at 806, 816, um, 810. APPN is something that we had on the list somewhere around here. It did not trigger. NEPT did not trigger. HOS did not trigger. So very, what, what, what not trigger, what it means very simply is that we, I only have an interest in these stocks if they're able to get through the previous day highs, okay? If they don't, we'll leave it alone. And if, if they're still intact, we'll put it on the list the following day. But if they cannot get involved the previous day high, then we do not get involved. Uh, FN is something that we flagged right over here, down one, two, three, four days in a row. Uh, 
we missed this entry uh, so we did not get involved this time looks okay this was a high flyer at one point as you can see here is going through a possible character change what does that mean the yellow the white line is a 10 day moving average yellow line is a 20 day moving average and the red is the 50 day moving average and as, as you can see here those averages have been acting as resistance since last august every time they got there you found the, the stock found the seller finally the company comes out with some earnings the stock reacts extremely well, goes up from $25 to $31 a share, and it starts to trade sideways. And as you can see here, the 10 and 20 day moving averages are now acting as support and curling higher. So this is a stock to watch because this could, you know, this, this could be one of these stocks that was in favor, out of favor, and now it might come back into favor. GALT, so we spoke about this already. UA, earnings play, stock goes up, huge. You don't chase this, okay? You wait for this pullback, stock goes down one, two, three, four, four, uh, four days in a row. Uh, we were looking to get involved through this high, didn't happen the following day. We got involved right over here through this high. It went up maybe 85 cents, sold off. We took a loss as it broke this low over here. Uh, went down to the 20, had a nice bounce, but we took a loss, we'll wait for a better setup. Valero, never triggered. CBIO, similar situation. This is a hot biotech stock, uh, pulled back to the secondary offering. And here, the stock goes down, lower high, lower high, lower high. Here was a fake out. But look how it starts basing right over here, right over here at the 2450 level. And look how, the, how these candles start to tighten up. And we got involved through this high, which was roughly 26.45. We got hit at 26.73. Stock hit a higher 28.94, uh, up you know, a little bit over two points uh, here at the high. Still looks okay. We're looking for further upside. HX, uh, we got involved right over here at 10.99. Stock went up, and then we uh, got stopped out at 10.50. NAPT never triggered. HOS never triggered. Snap. EPS play, huge gap. You don't want to chase this gap, okay? Especially on a stock that has 404 million shares is outstanding. There was an opportunity here to get involved, which we did uh, on 227 at 17.30 at, uh, at 7. No, it couldn't be 17.35. 227. 227. I'm sorry, here it is. 214 at 18.88. Uh, we took it off here on this day. Stock pull back, and then here these yellow arrows is when we got involved again. Stock looks okay, a lot of coal buying. Um, it looks okay. CO, here's a nice move in the stock from nine to roughly $11 a share. Starts to trade sideways for roughly 10 to 15 days. Here it starts to tighten up. Uh, we got involved here. This was an earnings day. Uh, they reported the numbers, stock got down. But it came back, we bought it through this high here at roughly at $11 actually. The next day the market took a beating. Uh, we got stopped out, set up, it actually you know looked okay again the following day. We got back involved. It looks okay. Halle Burton, um, a lot of call buying in this name, but we got involved here going through this high at roughly 48.60. Stock went up just a little bit, went as high as 48.94. Uh, no follow through. We got stopped out as it broke. The breakout days low. Uh, DVAX never trigger. As you can see, some of these names continue to get back on the list, okay? Uh, because sometimes they don't trigger on a particular day, but they might still look interesting for the following day. Here's another situation where uh, ADVM, we got involved here. The stock prints an inside day. We got involved here at roughly... Uh, 220 at 228.706 stock hit a high of roughly 733 market sells off no follow through we get stopped out uh but then it still looks good as we got stopped out below the 10 day moving average and the stock goes back closes above the 10 day moving average still looks okay we got back involved in the stock on Friday at 7.15, and it's, and it's looking real good. That's This is another reason why if you get stopped out, take your losses, take your stops. And if you have to buy them back at a higher price, and you're buying back at a higher price. Because this can, this can go either way. Uh, you either take your stop and you live to fight another day, or 
you know, you roll the dice and it might come back up, or sometimes they don't come back up. BVN, this is an interesting weekly chart, which, by the way, I'm going to do a, a video on some weeklies later. This stock has been trading sideways for roughly five years, just sideways action. It's finally getting, you know, above this resistance line here. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're involved in $16 a share. This stock looks real good. Uh, with a stop here at this low at 14.13. Uh, this stock looks real good. Uh, you know, again, the, the bigger the consolidation, uh, the higher, more than likely, that's going to trend. DVAX never trigger, GLT we spoke about, ADVN. CNET, we had this stock uh, two days in a row, I believe. On this day, didn't trigger. And then on this day, which was Friday, the trigger price was roughly 528. Uh, and it gapped open. It was up 17% for the day. In a situation like this, when the stock gaps up like this, I just let it go. I mean, if I just let it go and I, and I focus on the other names, uh, you can put up an intraday chart to see if you can buy the opening range break or you can buy some type of pullback. But for me, 95% of the times, I'm letting it go. CBIO, we spoke about, APTO. We're looking to get involved with this stock here at 282 plus 10 cents, 292. Uh, did not get hit, but it still looks okay. This looks okay for Monday, for tomorrow going through this side, 285 plus a couple of pennies. Um, this is Friday's list, RCKT. Stock is down one, two, three, four days in a row. As you can see here, the stock is down, print an inside day. When you see an inside day under this context, it just very simply means to me that this previous little move is coming to an end. So then my trigger price will be going through this candle, which was 17.37. We got involved at 17.45. Um, we got involved at 17.45. And it had a nice close, up 8% for the day, closed at 18.13. And you're, you're, we're looking for more follow-through here. ADBN we spoke about, Snap we spoke about, this we spoke about already. Twitter, very nice looking name. Big gap on earnings, there's no reason to chase this gap. You wait for the, for the stock to set up. As you can see here, it starts to, it goes up, it starts to set up. Here it starts to tighten up. We got involved going through this high, 32.56 at 32.66. Uh, looking for more follow through. And I like this one. There's earnings behind it. There's some hedge funds, uh, a lot of hedge fund buying recently over the last couple of quarters. This is, this is without a doubt, a stock to watch with a stop loss right over here underneath the 20-day moving average. Well, uh, this one looks real good. Um, we had it on the list on Friday going through this high, 154.91. We got hit at 155.67, hit a high of 159. This looks real good, looking for more follow through here. And as far as stops are concerned, a situation like this, my original stop was 150, $150, okay? Just to give us some room due to the liquidity factor of this stock. Now, as the stock broke out, uh, my stop will go up to 153.07 more than likely. So you, want, you can raise your stops, or you can leave it as it is to give a wiggle to give it some wiggle room. But here's the situation: stock is one, down one, two, three, four days in a row. It starts to flatten out here over the last one, two, three, five days in a row. And all I'm looking to do is buy it through the previous day high. Uh, so you want to buy the stock as it starts to move higher. APTO we spoke about. This one almost triggered. Stock is down one, two, three, four, five days in a row. Prints an inside day on very low volume. Uh, we had a buy stop at 642, and the high was 640, so it didn't get there. This still looks okay. However, uh, they report on the 7th, so I'm probably, I'll probably pass on it. Um, so let me give you a couple more ideas, okay? DRNA, just to let you know exactly what I'm looking for with some of these trades. DRNA, here's a stock that's you know, doing well, trading well. We got involved right over here at 998 and we sold it right over here. Uh, when you're buying these swings, I'm a big believer that you need to sell on the way up. So you sell some on the way up and then you can always leave, leave some, leave a piece to see how, how far it will take you. It all depends on how you view short-term trading. Me, for example, for the most part, every now and then I might leave a piece to see how far it goes. But the way I look at things very simply is that 
when the stock is up, whatever it is, five days in a row, I'd rather take a bulk of the money out and find something that is just beginning. So as I'm going through my holdings every day, I'll say, for example, this one is up four days in a row. That's what I want to trim. The stocks that are just expanding on the first day, I want to take that money from the stocks that are up four or five days in a row and put it into the ones that are just beginning, okay? So you want to rotate that money uh, to find stocks that are giving you a better risk re reward ratio. So DRNA is something that, you know, stock goes up, you don't chase, you wait for it to settle down, you wait for the consolidation, you wait for the tightness, and then you're looking for the expansion. CDXS, the biotech sector and biotech stocks have been holding up extremely well. The best setups for the, for, over the last couple of weeks uh, have been biotech names. Here's a stock in 2.9. Uh, which is right over here. Stock is down one, two, three days in a row. We got involved through this high, had a nice move higher. Again, one, two, three, four, then it starts to trade sideways, then it goes up again. Uh, so this can here, one, two, you know, stock's down uh, three days in a row. If you have TC2000, uh, it's, very, it's a very simple scan. And here is, here's a scan if you have it. C is lower than C1, C1 is lower than C2, and C2 is lower than C3, okay? And then what you're looking for is for the update, and that's when you, and that's when you get involved. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So, again, a few things. Number one, don't be afraid to take your stops. Take your stops. If you need, if you need to get back involved, you get back involved. You jump back, you know, jump back on the horse, even if it's at a higher price. Uh, number two, more importantly... You need to do the work pre-market. So what I normally do, my process is very simply, I scan whatever it is I got to scan pre-market, whatever, after the market closes or before the market opens, depending whether you work best during the morning hours or during after hours. I'm a morning guy, so I do it before the market opens. And then you go through your scans, you set up your watch list, you put the alerts in, you figure out how much you're going to risk per trade, you figure out how many shares you have to buy, and then... When the market opens, it's just a matter of putting your buy stops. And once you put your buy stops, if they get triggered, you're in. If they don't get triggered, you're out. The market is going to do whatever it's going to do, no matter how much you're staring at the screen, no matter how much you're switching from the minute chart to the five minute chart, the stock is going to do whatever it's going to do. It's that simple. Once you put your buy stop order in, a lot of the things uh, that happen throughout the day is pretty much out of your control. Your stop gets hit, you get out, you reassess, you move on to the next one, you live to fight another day. And also, swing trading, in my opinion, should be part of a portfolio. I don't believe in swing trading your entire account. I run my portfolios. I have some passive ETFs. SPY, IWM, QQQs, the market has a tendency to move higher over time, so you dedicate a bulk of your assets or a piece of your assets into passive strategies, okay? And passive doesn't mean you buy it and, and forget it. Passive means you buy it and then you act on it when you have to act on it. And usually, you don't have to act on them uh, for a very long time. That's simple. And then you have your swing strategies, and then you can also have what I have is a weekly strategy, which is looking at longer term charts. I'm a big believer in diversification and managers, strategies, and time frame. Okay. Uh, swing trading your entire account. I'm not a big, I'm just not a big believer in that because you're, you're leaving too much up to chance. There's certain times in swing trading where you're not going to be in tune with the market. So you might, the market might be moving higher and maybe only the FANG names are taking up the entire index and you're here just circle jerking uh, because stocks, individual stocks are not moving. So if you own the market, you're not going to have that issue. You're always going to be in tune with the market because you own the market. And then you'll, you'll get those little weeks and months where swing trading is actually really, really working. And that's when you create that alpha. 
okay? But it's a lot easier to create the alpha when you know you've been involved and you don't have to worry about missing out on the S&P 500 going up 3% because you don't own it. If you own it, you own a piece of it, all right? So trade well and be well and be in the lookout for the weekly video, which I'm going to do next, all right?